Welcome to Music and Anime. My name is Ab, or you can call me AB because I'm here with KD Fox, that is Kenya Danino. There we go. Um, Co creator of uh, Animal Arithmetic, um, the other uh, being substantial. I talk about it in uh, my video of Nujavest uh, that I just put out. I'll put a description, I'll put a link to that in the description. We're here in Anime Boston and everything, and just to start off, what is Animal Arithmetic? Okay. Animal Arithmetic is a multi collaborative project between Substantial, I, and a bunch of our friends in the industry that are either on the music side or the voice acting side of things. This is a manga that you're making, right? So Correct. I've had this idea since I was in high school, fleshing it out. Um, at first, it was actually called Demon Revolution, um, and it had to talk about time and the effects of time on people. And over time, it evolved into animal arithmetic. There's still an incorporation of the um, importance of time as well, but also the importance of just humanity, what it means to be a human being, what it means to exist in the realm of Earth or outside of it, and the characters in Animal Arithmetic uh, basically highlight different parts of humanity when humanity is on the verge of a crisis. It takes place like in a dystopian future type of setting, It does, right? yes. I mean, this is, the dystopian um, genre has been around for quite some time, but has picked up tremendously, I want to say, in the past few years, especially after our pandemic, because now people are more privy to everyday lives and the importance of like really living to your fullest because you really never know what's going to happen in the next day so you should live every day as if it was mm -hmm. um, going to be your last which honestly yeah and animal arithmetic it's a story about that but it also details different people's lives because the characters are based on actual real people that I've met including myself in a world where you're kind of about to lose it all and time is ticking down so what impact will you have on your society what do you deem as important to preserve or save when the world is literally about to obliterate before your eyes. It's a very interesting concept. Um, some people have touched upon it, but not enough people have delved deeper into it because it is such a difficult concept to actually put into this kind of genre. Um, so we decided to tackle it in many different ways by bringing in the music of the culture, um, hip hop, jazz hop, uh, the music of anime and the talents of voice actors um, affiliated with theater and also affiliated with Crunchyroll. Mm -hmm. Outside of the world building, the world building and stuff like that, um, the track list. If we're talking about the soundtrack to Animal Arithmetic, mm -hmm. uh, every track is based off of like a character and stuff like that, right? Yes. So, so one cool thing about lo-fi or jazz hop, if you've ever listened to like the playlists um, on YouTube or even on like Spotify. Spotify or anything like that is that some really cool indie music makers will take voiceover from classic anime like Bebop or Champloo and they will make a beat using the audio clips from the um, from the actual people who are voicing in the anime from different scenes or different episodes and I found that I really really liked the aesthetic of that like audibly so I went after that same aesthetic with the album and I pitched the idea to Stan and Stan was like, I've never done anything like this before. It sounds dope. I've seen it done before. Why not try to do it at, like an album with that? It'll be something fresh, something dope, something we can actually like build upon as the years go by. So that's what we're doing now. Stand the man right there. Stand the man. Yeah, so I'm going to throw a track at you. A Hunter and His Prey. Right? This is Jackal speak. Right? Jackal. So we're going into uh, some of the characters here, right? So who is Jackal and what was the interaction of like uh, the back and forth of making this track? Well, in order to explain who Jackal is, then I should explain who KD is because they are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. um, Jackal and KD, the concept for them originated when I was going to Boston College and I was pursuing my major in fine arts. Ironically, we were in Anime Boston, so this couldn't be a better time to talk about this. Yeah, um, my professor, Candace Ivy, who is a character in Animal Arithmetic, wanted to push me a little bit 
while making my final project because I view myself as a fox in the way that I navigate life and think about life in that I am very guarded in certain ways and very open-minded in other ways. She questioned me as to like my progression in a piece that I made, which was called The Dogs of Change. There were five different dogs. There was a domestic dog, there was a a coyote, there was a wolf, there was a fox, and then there was a jackal at the end. The jackal represented the end of a cycle of growth, and I still identified with the fox, even though she thought that I identified with a jackal. And then she asked me, do you see yourself as a jackal in the future, where you will be this all-knowing, transformative type of artist, type of person? And I told her, No, I actually feel comfortable more being the fox because I can bounce back from my innocence to what I know now and what I'm continuing to learn. Yeah, she had mentioned that uh, what the jackal ha- is known for wisdom, right? Yes. And so the jackal is kind of like... Uh, and also judging the judgment of hearts, a.k.a. Anubis. Anubis, hey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... And death. <laughs> so there's that, too. So you have the fox versus the jackal in this, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of two sides of the same coin. Yep. Right, so how are... Uh, how is KD and jackal similar in this story? If you think about it, a fox and a jackal are of similar anatomy and also a jackal is a subspecies of fox. Jackals live in the desert where they have to vouch for their life where things are dry. Dry savanna, dry desert, all of that. A red fox, which is what KD is based off of, lives in the forest where there is life thriving. So automatically you have the same creature in different environments. Yeah, and probably different uh, backgrounds as well. Because Jackal, um, this is just right in the description, on uh, just right on the uh, Animal Rhythmic website where you can like see the characters and everything. Yeah. Uh, part of Jackal's background, he lost his sister yes. to some of the same hounds that are kind of like giving uh, yes. or kind of showing Katie where to kind of go exactly. in, in his journey. Um, so you already have this initial conflict between them. Yes, so Jackal has a lot more knowledge of the spiritual realm that they are navigating in Animal Arithmetic, all the characters in general, because he has knowledge of how to navigate the shadows and the, the opposite side of the light. And KD is just discovering how to use or navigate the portals of light that travel into different dimensions because in this particular story, Earth is just one dimension. There are many of them and the super, the supernatural, the angels, demons, the in-betweens, what have you, all exist within different planes of existence in animal arithmetic. So you will see a lot of story hopping, um, setting hopping throughout animal arithmetic. It may seem confusing in the beginning until you realize that the world is literally about to end and everything is being taken with it, including those realms. So they're learning about not only their humanity, but spirituality. Like basically what makes the angels and the demons tick? What makes an angel and a demon? Is Are they the same, the same thing? Are they different? Like where is the fine line? Who knows how to walk it? Those kinds of things. So that it's very deep conversational piece, um, animal arithmetic as a whole, with the media that we're using to tell the story and the concept of the story itself. I want to talk a bit more about the music. So sure. uh, you said that you're heavily reliant on music when it comes to creating. Yes. Uh, so how exactly is music involved with your process? So I my, I also work for the Board of Education. My kids tell me I have a superpower. I'm starting to believe that because it is actually really funky. So I'm actually synesthetic. Um, and that means that my brain basically processes the five senses a lot differently in that sometimes they can cross wire with each other. Um, some people see number patterns, some people see color uh, as sound, sound is color, vice versa, they smell what they taste like, things like that. Synesthesia works in fantastic ways. My synesthesia works in the way that I see images and can visualize an entire story through any song, depending on its energy. So if it is a instrumental song with low energy, like very calm vibes, I can actually picture what characters in my mind would look like and what they would sound like and what they would do walking alongside the song as if it was a soundtrack. And in that same respect, 
the different stories that I create, because it's not just animal arithmetic that I'm also working on. I have different stories as well. It all depends on how the album or the sounds that I'm listening to vibe. So I can tell if like I need to write a serious scene if I'm listening to like straight up like music from a horror film or if I'm going to write like an action scene because the piano's going wild the orchestra's going crazy like that type thing you look for the mood in the music yeah. to get the inspiration to then add more to it and that kind of thing yeah. pretty cool pretty yeah. pretty cool pretty cool it's weird because like the kids also refer to your Cindy CJ as a superpower because I referred to it I referred to it as a superpower too hey, there before, you go. You know? so I was like oh okay yeah It was. it's a fresh um, perspective I really didn't mm-hmm. see it as that because usually whenever noises get very loud it can be very debilitating and that the noise also causes me to see color mm-hmm. um, so if things were like super 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 loud and things weren't harmonizing it would be all over the place, just like flashes of color here, there, everywhere. Like right now, it's pretty calm because there is a decent, there's like a pause in between when mm. there's sound and when there's not sound. Okay. So things are kind of in harmony at the moment. Pretty cool. But if one sound overpowered the other, it would get chaotic. And also in animal arithmetic, some of the characters actually function like that. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Which characters? A lot of them do. So there's particular characters that wear helmets like this, or masks like this, called um, spirit walkers. And they are able to strike up a contract with either angels or demons or the in-between. And those particular um, contacts give them the ability to navigate different worlds through their eyes. And in that sense, because this is like a whole cerebral experience, Mm seeing things through their eyes they process everything differently they process human emotion differently they process sound differently how things taste how things wow. like feel oh, so yes. it's like taking the concepts of synesthesia and implementing throughout these characters yes that's okay yeah talk about putting yourself into your work right yep. <laughs> that's pretty pretty cool all right so if you look at your twitter and stuff like that and everything under your descriptions you have musician under your tag there yes can you speak a bit more of that? Like, what is under your musicianship? What is under your belt as a musician? Now, necessarily, I wouldn't put that tag, in, like, if I wasn't also trying to practice the thing. Mm-hmm. I am. Like, I'm not as good as, as I, what like, is, what is or anybody else who's doing Everything the thing. is a spectrum, right? We all start somewhere. We all, you know, it's... But, it, but if you're trying, trying, you know. I think a musician, much like an MC, is somebody who can manipulate their talent to draw the masses and very effectively. So... I think in that respect, I could be considered a musician as well because I'm taking sound and morphing it into something else. Yeah. If you think about like synthesizers, like the keyboard, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, like a synthesizer. Those, they manipulate electricity to shape, yeah. uh, you know, electricity differently and stuff like that. It's creating. a different perspective on yeah. the title, but mm-hmm. it still works in that sense. Yeah. Like, that's how I would call myself a musician. Mm. Like, but first and foremost, yes, I am an artist. In the traditional sense, I make many different things. It's not just manga. I also make like actual sculptures from time to time. I make my own apparel. I make like a whole bunch of different things, like accessories. So yeah. But you also like sing, though, right? Because <laughs> yes. I mean, we're, we're talking voices I- of of Imani over here. How do you know about the voices of Imani? I mean, what do you know? I I know that that you studied with... uh... Funny enough, I literally just ran into our old choir leader at this convention, which is like crazy. But yes, I did um, sing with the voices of Imani in a gospel choir. And yes, a lot of the energy in gospel that I get, people used to call me happy feet because I would actually get that energy from the songs that we sing channeled in through my body. I don't know how to dance, but my feet can absolutely work. <laughs> like, um, but that's also where I started getting a sense that I was synesthetic because I had no mm. idea until I started singing and using that and combining it with my craft that I was. So I decided to touch upon that in the years after like graduating BC and then going into college and going into different areas like education with the kids. Mm-hmm. 
I'm like starting to realize a lot more about my superpower in that sense, about myself, about what I want to make as an artist, about what I want to make as a storyteller, as a person who lives on this planet Earth and breathes the same air, but like sees things through different lenses. So on that note of uh, educating and stuff like that, the audience for animal rhythm what's the what do you think this will gravitate towards definitely dystopian readers definitely um people who are into shonen i know that shonen usually has male protagonists in this particular case i draw a lot of my inspiration from atsushi okubo who is the creator of soul eater And for Soul Eater, you have two protagonists. I liked how that worked out a lot because you got to see both sides of things from two different perspectives, even though they worked as the same unit. And I was like, I'm going to incorporate that. I like that. That's more equal to me than just having like one character be the focus of everything. Mm -hmm. I want to have as many perspectives in animal arithmetic as possible. Should it be adapted into an anime, I would also like it to have the same treatment. But as for the manga, I definitely want to explore all of the characters as much as possible, just to let the audience know that it's not just one person's story. It's the story of people in an environment where they're about to lose it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dope stuff. It's really cool. I have some like dumb questions here. Like beasts of no burden. No question is a dumb question. Just spit it beasts out. Beasts of burden. Is that a Rolling Stones reference? Oh, you caught it? <laughs> Not everybody is able to catch that. I'm so, so happy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, it is. I, I, I'm in a GB band. We play that all the time. There so you it, go. It's just one Absolutely. Of those things, it's like, a just... Rolling Stones reference. Yeah, okay. Yes. Also, there was a poem that I had um, listened to. It was a spoken word poem because I also used to be in, in slam poetry at the slam team for BC. And they titled it Beast of Burden. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. But in the way that they said it, they were referring to beasts as human emotion. So as a oh. thing that burdens people is about having heavy emotion. And that's why I also was like, okay, yeah, that's something I want to explore in animal arithmetic. Basically, all the things that people shy away from because they don't want to delve deeper into, animal arithmetic is touching all of those buttons. So going back to the demographic for who would want to read or maybe be interested in animal arithmetic, it is for deep thinkers. It's for people who want to question the boundaries. Like, why do people stop here and never explain or delve into the deep things that we all know we feel but we just feel like they're not important Mm -hmm. or maybe not so much that they're not important but maybe it's just uncomfortable to talk about trying to open up people's minds a little bit more to talk about the uncomfortable parts of life because i think that that is a way to bridge the gap between people so we don't have all these barriers between all of us Mm -hmm. you know i mean it's very ambitious but i'm gonna give it my best shot yeah, I mean, there's stories out there that utilize animals and, you know, animal-like you know, figures yeah, and like stuff like Aesop's that. Yeah, like Aesop's fables and things like that. The, the yeah. stories that teach you lessons and whatnot. You know. Sure, they teach you lessons, but the lessons are also temporary if you don't know or have not learned from the emotions that mm-hmm. drove you to understand the moral of the story. Yeah, this is one thing, like, I found Beastars so fascinating because it took elements of... You know what an animal? Oh, I almost dropped my phone there. It, it took. It takes elements of like initial things about an animal, like yeah. a dog, or you know, uh, in this case, like she, you know, being a wolf and all that. Right, right, right. And how that coincides with the kind of struggles that a person in that particular time predator prey yeah morphing or, that into like a yep. whole classist thing b stars is just doing it in a different aesthetic way but it's yeah. essentially talking about some of the same things yeah yeah just like um, psychologically why someone yeah. would do something mm-hmm. um and, and the reasons why they're doing it stuff like that um yeah it's just really really cool stuff just to add it like animal arithmetic's question that it is going after answering is what makes the world tick and is there anything worth saving don't yeah that's a great way to wrap up the animal rhythm six section i just got a couple fun ones yeah so uh i love fun questions what was or still is your go-to ghetto snack you know when you're home and there's like nothing to eat Toasted peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, my guy. Okay. All day. Is that? 
that is, I, I mean, I'm talking like there's nothing at home. As in, there's always bread and there's always peanut butter and <laughs> jelly at home. Clearly, you haven't been in a New York neighborhood yeah, that for long. Me, for me, it was just bread and mayonnaise. <laughs> that too. Oh, my God. Mayo yeah. sandwiches. Mayo sandwiches, yeah. Syrup sandwiches. You don't know about that. That's a southern I don't know, I don't know about the syrup. That's sandwich. a southern no, thing. But yeah, no, that, those, that would be it. Yeah, just Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches do it for me all the time. It's just an extra added step to toast it if you just hell had a toaster. And always, I, always I, gotta I love go it. Toast it. Yeah. it tastes so much. Try peanut butter toasted sandwiches, please. Throw some bananas mm-hmm. in there? It will change your life. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so is that one? And just lastly, I want to just a speed run. I'm going to, since uh, you resonate with the fox. Yep. And the fox is like your whole thing. Yep. I'm going to throw a fox at you. And you just tell me real quick, just like quick thought on, on that fox or just, you know. Okay. So first one, Star Fox. I love Star Fox. Where do you think I got this dope helmet idea from, man? I freaking love go. Star Fox. Every time I go to a convention, somebody asks me if I'm cosplaying Star Fox. And I'm like, no, but I love Star Fox. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. I love Fantastic Mr. Fox. One of Wes Anderson's, like, best films, in my honest opinion. I love that film so much. It's just so, like, kitschy that it's great. It's fun. Like, I like the, uh, the animation stuff on mm-hmm. it. It's cool. Yeah. Mozilla Firefox. <laughs> it was great until it flubbed. <laughs> it was great in concept. I wish they would have... got a cool logo. I wish they would have taken the logo and then, like, put it on something else <laughs> that worked better. <laughs> Just, just what it, just what it wasn't. <laughs> it just wasn't great, but the logo was fire, literally. Uh, Megan Fox. <laughs> Damn, you really went there. <laughs> but it's, it's only gonna go where you take it. Like, aye, aye. What do you mean? I'll give you that. Megan Fox is aye. Thank you, aye. The nine-tailed fox. Which one? You tell me. Like, it, just. Dude, there's a nine-tailed fox from Okami. Well, so there's when you nine tails so from when, Pokemon. So when you hear there's, nine-tailed fox, there's nine tail the, the nine-tailed fox, aka Kurama from Naruto. And yes, I love all of them. <laughs> it could just be the concept of the nine-tailed fox too. Right? It's okay. Yes, I love it. I love foxes and everything. I, but I think in terms of like just Japanese folklore and even Chinese folklore, I have always loved how the fox symbolizes either something great or something terrible. And there seems to be no in-between as well. So it really is up to interpretation whether a fox is a hero or a villain. And I also wanted to, going back to animal arithmetic, explore that with KD because in some senses, she's a very cold person you wouldn't think that someone who thinks like her is actually going to quote unquote save the world but she does Mm -hmm. foxy grandpa (laughs) (laughs) you know from spongebob yes (laughs) all the old people from spongebob are like high key hilarious especially old man jenkins like how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> Foxy grandpa is hilarious. It's a good pull. It's a good pull. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. Yep, we're going with that. Alright. And uh, KD Fox. I mean, I like me. I'm still learning how to like me. So that's also a part of my artist journey as well. You will see a lot of it in animal arithmetic. I do struggle with myself a lot. But there are also many really cool things about myself that I had to learn over time and I'm still learning, so it's a journey. All right, yeah. there you go. That has been uh, KD Fox, uh, co-creator to Animal Arithmetic. Definitely check it out. Check out the music. Yes. Again, by Substantial, all the artists and everyone involved with it and everything, all the voice actors and stuff too. Aside from that, uh, where, can they, where can they find you? Well, my socials are... KD Fox, which is K A Y D E E F O X X, on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find me as KD Fox with the initial KD and then F O X X on Spotify. Ooh, I'll add it all right here, but keep on listening to the music to make these projects, anime, manga, and everything so great. I will see you in the next video. Bye.